agenda for us to start some discussions. Figure we probably wouldn't get too in depth today. Uh, good place to start. Uh, really appreciate everybody making an effort to, to get out here. I did hear from Barbara Young. She would have been here, but she's feeling a little underwhelmed today. And I did not hear from any other trustees whether they intended to attend or not. Um, you should all have in front of you our brief agenda for the day and also the document that I guess it was the last trustee meeting was handed out for discussion about potential items to be listed as responsibilities for the finance committee. Uh, I believe most of these came from our work session uh, where we all went around and wrote on the, uh, the boards what we thought we ought to uh, be looking at for finance and the various other committees. So I thought we could start today with a discussion of what we believe our role should be so we can take back to the board the recommendation for that. Okay. So I guess we can work down the list and add to and take out as we go. Uh, as thoughts, please chime in. Obviously, uh, you can all read what's in front of you, so no real need to read it to you. Um, oversight or audit obviously makes sense for a finance committee. Uh, working with the staff, primarily the director, and developing the budget. My kind of take on that, in fact, I think I might have been the one who wrote that on the board, was helping to define the priorities of Board of Trustees make recommendations of where we should be focusing early in the process so that the director and his staff can then figure out to uh, what the cost of those priorities might be and how to implement them mm -hmm. and, and so forth. Um, obviously, I think the director and his staff are well equipped to develop a budget, but by being involved in the development early, we would know more about it and speak more intelligently about it as as time goes on and folks ask us questions and so forth. Um, I think accompanying the director um, for any of the public hearings or uh, funding requests to the governing bodies probably makes some sense. Have somebody from that locality to attend and if nothing else, show support and then as this has helped to report back to the board. Um, you know what would be helpful to me, and maybe to everybody I don't know, is that I know this is all based on a, there's a predictable calendar when this stuff occurs. Um, if we could... It, it in, is, and under our meeting schedule, I figured we would talk about if we're going to assist with the budget, when do we need to have our meetings to help? Yeah, I mean, just with each of these each of these bullet points here, um, I would love to know if it applies, what time of year we should be doing this. Otherwise, this stuff will just get lost in the soup. You know? I, cause I, because I'm new, I don't know what the typical calendar is. So as we go down them, it would be really helpful, or maybe we work or figure this out. But um, well, Why don't we understand what you're saying, think it makes sense. Why don't we work on what the responsibilities are and then we put together a committee timeline of when we need to be focused on various things. Perfect. Rather than try to do it piecemeal as we go. Makes sense. Thank you. I'm not sure what I think I know what they meant by monitor compensation. Somebody believes we should be surveying other libraries, I guess, to see what their compensation scales look like to make sure we're in line. Not sure that's something that we as members of the Board of Trustees would do. Um, I know, at least in my experience with my locality, every few years we do a compensation study. And Town Council would then direct staff to either work on their own or work on with a consultant to develop that compensation study to bring back recommendations. Yeah, one of the things that in, in that regard, 
uh, John there is you're 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 monitoring this one here is a is a bit puzzling to me uh, because what is the comparative zone that you look at when you evaluate the appropriateness of changing right. the compensation rate for the locality? I, I used to do that with my staff, and I would look at all the nonprofits within the District of Columbia region. Certainly not New York City or. Chicago or Los Angeles, so I'm sure that the same situation would be here with the Southwest libraries being a lot different than here in Central Virginia versus Northern Virginia, and I don't know how you do that. Do you just select a certain group that... <coughs> when we've done it in the past, we've looked at Central Virginia primarily, um, including Enrico, Richmond, Chesterfield. Um, Hanover particularly looks at those for all of theirs. I think Goochland also looks, you know, looks towards the city. You get farther out, and they kind of tend to pick different ones um, on the regional basis. We, if we're if we're including them or you know, considering their information, um, Central Rap in Fredericksburg, um, Jefferson Madison in Charlottesville, and Williamsburg Regional are sort of on the um, outer edges of our sphere and our libraries to, to look at. Um, there's a regional library that serves New Kent and Charles City County, and they're, they're not comparative, mm -hmm. so we don't, we don't look at that information. Well, is that specifically a role we feel like the Finance Committee monitoring of the compensation. I mean, I think that's part of the budgeting responsibility, so I don't know that we need to call that out. Our well, responsibilities. I mean, it seems to me that it's just to check that the compensation is within the reasonable boundaries of that area. I think so, too. To be, I, I guess it makes sense to be um, well-versed in who determines the compensation? Is there like a? Well, ultimately, we do. Is it the market trustees. that determines it? I mean, is it the? Um, is there I mean, any compensatory board right. that? Uh, so there isn't a comp board. Um, the library has its own salary scale. You have to remember that the library is the employer, not Cushing County, not Hanover County, right. Right. King and Queen County. I think that's been one of the frustrations for King and Queen. They tend to not pay people on their staff a lot of money, and um, we have to pay everybody the same. The branch manager in Goochland, and the branch manager in West Point, branch manager in King and Queen, that pay rate for that position is the same regardless of its location. Um, that's, you know, that's sort of like the federal government. Once that pay rate is set at a certain level within a pay grade. Well, I mean, it's, 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 it's based on the fact that the job duties are basically the same. Right. And so you pay people the equivalent. Um, PRL has what I would say is a long history of, of not really negotiating on you know, starting salary. Um, we start people at the bottom of the scale uh -huh. unless there's something um, really exceptional. Yes, I'll say, right. um, but that that is that is historically how that has worked. We do some study, and at least in my experience, we've worked like with Hanover County and with their HR department um, on some of the positions that might be more comparable. IT positions come to mind because everybody has IT, um, but you know, Hanover doesn't have librarians working for them outside of PRL. So we're looking at what is going on with the other localities typically. Um, when we readjusted our pay scale two fiscal years, two, two years ago, um, because of the um, increase in the state minimum wage, and uh, I would say that the, the comp plan needs to be updated at this point a couple of years out, but it's, it's likely gone. On a percentage basis, 
and I don't know that it is every year, but every time you look at that, but uh, King and Queen at the time was not considering additional pay. King William was not either, and then the library budget being brought to them, there was a just in compensation, and that's where the stalemate, I think, was with King William that year over the budget, that and somebody didn't like hot spots. Uh, and we were able to work through that, but you know, they were looking at, at least what I was hearing was, well, our employees aren't getting a whole lot of raises, and you're doing a compensation study, and that was contentious. But unless you get all the localities on the same cycle for doing that, whenever the library does it, it's going to be off cycle with somebody. item on the bullet list was to educate the board on finance, financial issues. Seems to make sense that that's our responsibility. Would that be a separate workshop? Or is that a part of a meeting? I mean, how would we actually how, do that? How does that work? I would think we could do it as part of a meeting. As part of a meeting? As issues came up that we need to talk about as we're working on the budget, we can say, you know, we understand this from working with Tom on the budget. This is why we're asking you to do this. This is why the finance committee is recommending it and during those budget discussions. There may be an issue that is so large that we do want to ask for a work session. I think that, that information tends to be more of a bullet point level. Um, I mean, like state aid, there really isn't federal aid um, for the library, no, but, uh, but state aid is a significant portion of that. And I generally just keep the board up to date with that throughout the, the year and throughout the legislative session. So that's more just a here's how much we're going to get kind of thing? There's not much well, typically we would let you know what um, what the library world, um, I will say, is requesting. Um, state aid is calculated based on the funding and the formula in the state code, and um, they determine what the amount of state aid is on a need basis based on, on, on that code of Virginia, um, on the formula there. Um, and then we have to convince the legislature to fund it. Um, they don't automatically you know, give us a you know, million dollar increase because the amount of state aid that is needed has increased. We have to we have to lobby and fight for that every year. So how do you, how do you do that, Tom? How do you what once is this is this based on a uh, a comp, a compilation of all library systems? Uh, presenting their requests Again, to the, so state in the Code of Virginia, mm -hmm. it is stipulated that the Library of Virginia is the administrative function right. for so, that. So they're the ones who have the lead in carrying this message back to the legislature. They have the lead in calculating the need. Um, the, that funding is not um, part of, it's a pass through for the Library of Virginia and the Library of Virginia Board. It's not opposed to it, but they are not the strongest um, of supporters of that. They have their own priorities, quite honestly, with the legislature. Mm -hmm. So the Virginia Library Association um, does have a lobbyist that they hire, mm -hmm. and their lobbyist carries our message forth. Um, and in years past, I typically am asking um, those of you who are on the board to contact legislators, particularly ones that are in our region that have coverage of, of our citizens and I think they have influence in the process. It doesn't help us to contact um, somebody from Tidewater or Bath County or wherever right. if they're not a part of one of the influential committees in the process. Right. So, is it always a battle? Um, I would say that it is. Um, 
it's, it's, there's, it's state politics. Um, it's gone all over the place in my time at PRL. This past year, um, we had asked for two and a half million dollar increase. Um, the political fight between the House and the Senate for you know, direction on how the state budget went was interesting. Um, Is it usually right down party lines? No, no. It really? Has, no, it has. It has. Um, has a, a wide swath of how okay. it works. It just, <laughs> um, It'd be interesting to see that. So, so who in the state is? Well, how does it plug into the state in its budget? Uh, the state aid. Well, it's part of the Library of Virginia's budget, which is part of the Department of Education. Department budget. of Education budget. And so you need to find key actors who like you there. <laughs> um, I will say that that approach doesn't particularly work. We've, mm -hmm. we've done that to, to um, Ms. Lemon's point. Um, I mean, we've, we've worked with Democratic governors, Republican governors. Um, they don't tend to, um, to want to uh, support libraries mm -hmm. in, in the governor's budget. Right. Um, we've worked with secretaries in the Department of Ed. Of course, we're a very small part of the Department of Ed. The total amount of state right. aid is less than thirty million dollars. Right. So um, we tend to um, use our influence um, in the money committees where we can make a difference. Right. So what happened with the two point one million increase? Uh, or two point five. Two point five. Um, so um, the. Uh, I'm kind of doing this from memory, but the house, the house was pushing, um, putting a lot of money in reserve, and, um, and and not spending as much. The um, Senate, I believe, was trying to spend a lot more, and uh, I believe it was in the Senate budget they amended our amendment to make it a five million dollar increase, yeah. and the House lowered it. And then they had their skinny budget, which was something that was new that we never had before. So at the end of the fiscal year, on June 30th, um, nobody really knew what was going to happen. Remember, they came back in the summer, and um, the budget got fattened up. And we ended up with uh, over $3 million increase in state aid. And they could have asked for 2.5. Yeah. So, so that was that was sort of the best case scenario. <laughs> <laughs> Worst case has been you know getting cuts. So. Okay. But, but but generally it's you know talking about that that our whether our amendment has been submitted, um, asking you to contact the legislators if there's <coughs> in, the, in the service area particularly. Okay. Virginia politics is very local. The chair of the finance committee is from Tidewater. They're probably going to say, well, it's nice to hear from you in this one, but I don't cover Goochland. <laughs> Even though they're making decisions that do affect them. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, absolutely. Okay. So, moving down to the next bullet point is work together with the director on reserve fund. Make sure allocations are in line with long range planning. That sort of makes sense. Access to financial statements. That's the one that I haven't quite understood. Um, having access meaning <laughs> we're presented with the balances. I don't think we want direct access to our accounts. At least I don't. I'm not sure what Hanover County that. keeps. They're the fiscal agent, right? So this is all Hanover County accounts. Is that correct? So the library no longer has any bank account or what was an investment account with LGIP, which is part of the state's treasury department. But yeah, we no longer have any accounts like that. So I, I 
don't think that gets stricken. Well, no, I believe that we should have access to the information, warrants, and deposits. Right. I'd like to see the deposits. Which is presented every month. Yeah. Right. Deposits. Yes. Um, yeah, we've never, I mean, we've never done deposits, but we, just the warrants. we can show you those. I mean, they are listed in, in terms of the increases in, in the revenue side of things. But well, it, we can, you know, balance sheets I think are a good idea. And just knowing, um, just in general, what's going into the reserve fund and where it came from. To me, that's... We should know that. Yeah, and, and the same thing with their investments. I'm not quite sure where they are and why they're there. And not that I'm going to make any difference about what they do. I'd like to well, know. Well, it would be interesting to see even the unrealized gains and losses. Right. I mean, I, I'd just like to know about the philosophy of the county and how it's investing money and how you're... Well, because I'm getting asked questions from my board, and I have no clue. So, like, how is there... Got a question? How is there three point one million dollars in the reserve fund? I said, I don't know. Well, where'd it come from? I don't know. So I mean, I I'm getting asked questions, and I, I need to be able to give a reasonable answer, and I, I don't feel like I can do that. Well, some of that, hopefully, we can when we get to the reserve fund discussion today, we can talk about where that came from. I think Tom has those mm -hmm. answers. Excellent. I'll explain that. But I don't know that we're if we're going to continue to ask Hanover County to handle our investments, I don't know that we're going to change the way they do it. Mm -hmm. and if we want to do it ourselves, we can do right. that. I'd just but like to know what they're doing and how they're doing it and what the results are. Not asking just for, for a change. Just, just asking for reports. Information. Yeah. Yeah, I, don't, I think I that's mean, worthy. I, Hanover's going to do what Hanover does. I, that's not my business. But I, what is our business, though, is to, to be able to be cognizant of what's going on financially. If it's good enough, I might try my own investments there. There you go. <laughs> okay. Receive explanations for expenses over a certain dollar amount. For example, here was 10000 Yeah, I don't know what a reasonable amount would be, but that that's kind of standard for a lot of these organizations I've been a part of. Over a, it's a lower numbers usually, but yeah, like I said, mine was five thousand. Usually it's five thousand. Yeah, but, but this say. doesn't really surprise me. I mean, the budget is uh, six million now. Right. Your budget. I mean, there's, like as, as we learn the, the monthly warrants and such, that we know, we come to expect that, what is it, overdrive, whatever, Hoopla, Hoopla and Libby, is that one of those, is, overdrive is Libby, is that right? Overdrive is Libby. Uh, those guys are usually pretty expensive, but. Well, we do receive the monthly warrants, right. which, you know, we yeah. include those expenditures. Correct. Yeah. And certainly ask questions about it. Agreed. Um, Contracts. I, I mean, I think this this would be very helpful uh, and a, to understand the contracts, because when I got my first warrant list, I had no idea. I had to Google almost all of them just to see who they were, what they did. I had no idea. So uh, it, it might be helpful, especially to new members and such, to uh, pick, well, just have a vendor list and definition. This is who they are. This is what they do. I just think that would be very helpful. So you learn a lot more about how the library works, which is very interesting. So. Okay. 
accept gifts on behalf of the board and initiate thank you from the board. What has that process been in the past? Um, I mean, you learn about gifts that are substantial. We don't typically note lesser ones to the board. Um, people, the library is much different than the rest of your local government in that we regularly get donations from somebody paying their fine while we're talking here today and it's 75 cents and they'll hand you a dollar and tell you to, you know, the, the, the court I know, is the I know something about that personally. <laughs> <laughs> I might know a little bit about that. Um, you know, ranging, ranging upwards to, you know, the hundreds of thousands of dollars, which we generally note to the board, like you know about. But I don't think I've ever had a, a board member do the thank you. We've always done this administratively. I was going to say, it seems like the thank you would come from y'all. It seems to me. It would. Yeah, that, I mean, that seems to me. I, so. Um, I think we can just take that off the list. Yeah, I mean, you guys would let us know. and. I mean, obviously, if somebody's willing to donate a few hundred thousand dollars, we should recognize that. And maybe that's worthy of some presentation at a board meeting or something. Yeah, but, but I, think that's, that's, I think that's a good suggestion. <coughs> Unfortunately, when it's in that amount, um, it usually it's, passed. Yeah, it's, it's, they want to keep it on the down low. Right. But, but yeah. if we Thank were doing a big capital <laughs> campaign and somebody made a donation, Understand and oversee expenditures of the organization. Just, I think that was what we talked about earlier here. Make sure we understand the warrants, where it's going, personnel cost, sure. And so we are essentially saying, other than one minor exception, we agree with the list that. Yeah. Or were young put together and asked us to look at. Yeah. Looks pretty good. Okay. Tom, would you give us an overview of our budget, I guess where we are today, the current budget, and the budget request that the board approved at the last meeting to make to the localities so that we make sure we're up to speed and we can answer, ask you questions, and hopefully you can answer anybody's questions as we go through that. So, so if I could, to Ms. Sloan's question sort of on the timeline. Um, generally, in the fall, we are providing budget requests to the four localities. Um, they are all on different schedules. So generally Hanover is first, and all well, King and Queen is with us, they are generally last. Um, Hanover usually would like to have that information in the middle of October, which has proven difficult in years past. Um, the library board generally hasn't approved a budget until their October meeting. Mm -hmm. um, which uh, I would say the budget office has kind of gotten used to, um, but, but that is the timeline. Um, and then um, Goochland and King William um, get their requests um, delivered sometime in November, October, November. Um, King and Queen has typically sent the information, um, you know, here's how to submit your budget request. They generally send it right before Christmas and have it due like um, right before New Year's, kind of a, a later period there. Um, but, but that's the timeline for submitting them. Um, the next process, the counties are then working to produce what will become the county administrator's recommended budget. Um, just like the library director kind of presenting a budget to you, to you all, the county administrators will present a budget to their board of supervisors right. following 
all the different evaluations that we're talking about. Um, what do we need to do for, for pay, benefits, services? Are we changing services, increasing services? How are we going to find that stuff? Um, and the county administrators will generally present their budgets, I would, I would say, in February, February into March. Um, and that is when they present their budgets, the PRL is a portion of that. You're just saying that that's just part of that. Be part of what, just part of that thing. what they have in their budget. Generally, there is a line, the um, like topical um, uh, area of the locality's budgets is um, like cultural parks and rec and libraries are together in, in that area. In everybody's budget, because yeah. of the way the state does it, things. Mm -hmm. But yeah, there would be a line in there for funding. For is it just one line, or is there any explanation? Um, they generally have, um, you know, a, a brief paragraph. You know, what is what, what is PRL? What do we? What what does it fund? What do we get from our contribution? And a single line with the contribution amount. To look at that. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then the counties go through a process of public hearings. Um, you may be familiar with, they'll, they'll do a public hearing on their tax rates. Um, they will do public hearing on their full budget. Um, they will do presentations, depending on what local interest is. Um, is this at the committee level in the legislature? This is your local board of supervisors, no. county level. And this is happening in the spring. In the spring. So we're going to, okay. So I think it's safe to say that all four counties, the Board of Supervisors, will hear from their public safety folks, and they will hear from their school division. Um, they may or may not hear from anyone else, um, just depending. Okay. Um, in Hanover, um, I would say it's about every three years that we end up presenting uh, a budget request to the full board of supervisors. Um, in Goochland, I would say we present nearly every year, but they do that as, um, uh, I guess I'll call it a team presentation. Um, they'll do what they call their human services agencies. So. I'll, I'll be given a few minutes the same night that Goochland Cares is okay. given a few minutes, um, social services, CSB, uh, et cetera, okay. in, in Goochland. And then in <laughs> King William and King and Queen, um, they usually have an evening that um, they hear from what they consider their outside agencies, um, Bay Transit, Legal aid uh, comes to mind. I'm trying to think who else is in that. Uh, usually there. Community college is there. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So, uh, and that, um, I'm trying to think. I think. In King and Queen, I think they have gone to the point of saying it's it's optional if you'd like to come. Um, we go anyway. But there's a, there's. A, Supposed to be optional. Uh, always happy to go to Kimball and talk to them about things. Uh, but a lot of times it's less formal. So. Um, in Hanover and Goochland, there are meetings with staff um, in finance and or with the county administrators. So. Okay. Those typically are done in the fall along the lines of the budget request. So Um, after the counties have their public hearings on like rates and the budget itself, um, I want to say it's at least a two week, but it might be a month. You remember the, the, the counties have to have their budget advertised after presentation before they can approve it. Can't approve the budget until at least seven days after the public hearing. So, um, so they're generally. Well, they have to approve budget. it by the end of April, at least the school portion of the budget. They can wait till whenever to approve everybody else's, but they generally do it by the end of April. Thank you for helping. 
So it's a five of the 12 month <laughs> process. Um, I'll put our budget up. Um, is there a monitor? Right now we're forgive my ignorance. No, that's fine. So right now we are talking to them or about the requesting about twenty five. Twenty five. Okay. Yeah. So that would be <laughs> it's, it's starting July 1, 24, 24. through June 30, 25. Yes, correct. Okay. So we are currently in the twenty four. We're in the twenty four budget right now. July 1, 23 to June 30, 24. Okay. Thank you. For some reason, I always get that messed up. <laughs> did approve the budget um, and um, you know we've given it to um, to Hanover and to Goochland um, need to send some stuff back for King William but um, Hanover um, they've they've taken a look at it we are not asking for anything different in their world and um, we're, we don't have a we didn't even have a meeting this year with the budget staff um, or and the county administrator because uh, it's pretty minimal change. Um, we followed them in terms of what we needed for health insurance and what we needed for five percent merit, which is where they were at on um, merit. Um, I don't know what to say if there'll be a um, public presentation to the board of supervisors. Um, and I would kind of say that in at least three of the four localities because everybody has a significantly different board of supervisors. So I think it's likely to happen, um, but um, everybody only has so much time and the library is about 1% or less of their, of their spending and so I could see that they may not end up spending time um, here. I, you know, like I said, I don't know that for sure, um, but that would be my guess. Um, and uh, had a meeting in Goochland um, with the head of finance um, and county administrator. Um, uh, Mr. Carpenter's always his standard, his standard response is every, every year is a tough year so far, which is fine. <laughs> um, I, I don't expect anyone that we meet with in the fall to say, absolutely, I can guarantee you're going to get this month. 
you know, it's, they don't know at that point. We're we're just there to say this is what we're um, mm -hmm. what we're doing. Um, explain, answer any questions, and, and you know, kind of keep moving. Mm -hmm. um, I put that in the uh, slot here with my uh, right next to my HDMI, so I've got two things confused. I'm sorry. I hope I don't lose one or the other. But um, we're always presenting the previous year, so this is what this is the approved budget. What, what we had um, proposed as staff with our changes, um, and and we provide that back to the localities. And, you know, they ask, well, "What do you need more money for?" Mm -hmm. um, everybody's asked, "What's going on with King and Queen?" Um, so you know that's an opportunity when we have the have the meetings. Um, pretty sure I sent you the. Um, Excel version of this. Yeah, you did. Um, yeah. It has it has all of our payroll information. Mm -hmm. How we calculate that. Um, it has our shared pieces, and I have these in paper if you want to see them again. You know that's kind of hard to read, um, but but that's the way the, the budget is developed. Um, Talk to us a little bit about areas. how you calculate the percentage. That each locality owes for shared service. Hope you brought your readers. Oh. So, um, the shared service piece is validated of the localities on a per capita basis. And we calculate the down here at the bottom. Um, you will see underneath telecom, there will be a, a shared subtotal. So $2.7 million of the proposed budget is to fund shared services. Most of it is um, in personnel and materials. Um, we use anticipated income that we receive from state aid, fines, charges for service, that would be like photocopying, printing, etc. Um, uh, income from items that get lost or damaged that people um, pay for. There's $15,000 in this budget for investment income that is being used um, to offset those shared costs. Other income, $105,000 here in terms of um, reserve, and then uh, $22,000 is expenditure or refund or e rate. So we take those off of those the costs, and what is left, like we need to have kind of cash money for, if you will, and um, they get allocated to the localities based on per capita basis. What is your percentage of the population in the entire region. So in in this example for FY25, um, King and Queen has allocated no population because they're no longer anticipated to be part of the region. But Hanover is the is the greatest and that hovers around 70%. Um, I think it's Mathematically, I think it's 72 on a year, uh, looking at um, updated numbers from the 2020 census. So all of the state aid is applied to shared services? It is. And so all of the costs for operating the branches are borne by that locale? The, the people that keep the branch open Utilities, yeah. I mean, I guess in in the, in the broader sense, they're, sure. they're sharing yeah. those costs right. entirely. But yeah. Um, and 
course, the formula is changing from here to here. Um, I think I told this story before um, when I had first started trying to you know, pick up the budget, trying to make sure that I you know, counted everything, looked at everything. And so, you know, first year it was fine. And then the second year I'm like, well, do we update the population and change? You know, because there's nothing, there is, there, I'm not going to say there's nothing, but there is no real rule or policy procedure for how you're supposed to do that. I've suggested that if they do come up with a new contract, that they delineate that. If we, you know, I don't know if you want to do, use. Do you do it every 10 years at the new census? Or do you use projections? Correct. Yeah, but but what quickly um, became clear to me was you don't want to make a change here that then there is sort of an unexplained you know whatever dollar amount change and we're going back to Grinchland and saying well this year I need we need twenty thousand dollars extra and it's just because your population changed mm -hmm. nobody wants to hear that right <laughs> so. and then next year you might not know that because somebody else's population might increase yeah. So, um, yeah, so these numbers are based on the 2020 census. Um, these were based on previous, and there are changes over the 10 years. Okay. Um, but again, allocating those differently, adding, adding to somebody's burden, decreasing the burden, it's all kind of, uh, you know, kind of a wash. Uh, that's, that's the shared piece. Um, with state aid, state aid is not um, without any strings attached, if you will. Um, you have to agree to um, basically their rules for the state aid. You have to tell them what you're going to spend state aid on. Um, we could get audited on it. it. Hasn't happened in my experience, but we could. Um, and um, state aid in this budget is projected to be $586,320 for FY25. And historically, the library has allocated state aid to books and materials. It makes the record keeping pretty easy. We've been doing it that way. We literally have a, you know, a budget line for books and materials state and books and materials local. And when we have used all of the money in state, then we no longer spend from that and we spend it from the local. But it's a nice clean reporting um, for us that way. Um, you, you can spend it on other things, but there tend to be more rules um, related. Can I ask an ugly question? If you don't, if you look like you're not going to be able to spend all the state aid, what do you do? Um, Find a way to spend it. Spend it. <laughs> right. Okay. I mean, so, so the books budget is like seven hundred thousand. Right. Yeah. Right. And and I will say that. Um, but you do keep track of that, so you don't lose it, right? Correct. Correct. I mean, we 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 start on July one, allocating our expenditures. Right to state aid. So we know that we have spent it by, I would say, no later than the end of February, if that makes sense. Um, the collection is one of those things that um, is, it's like it's easy for us to spend some more money there. Um, people will use it. We can, particularly with the digital collection, I mean, right. we, we, can, we can spend that and it can be available to customers I'm, I wouldn't say maybe later today, but like tomorrow. Almost immediately. Yeah, yeah almost immediately. Right. If you're buying a physical book, That's harder. and you buy it, you order it on, I'm going to say, you know, June 20th, mm -hmm. it might be here in your hand by June 30th, and it, and it might not. And if it's not, then you didn't spend it in fiscal year. <laughs> so, um, sort, of, sort of the same with staff. Um, if um, if I had somebody who was out because they were sick for a couple of weeks in July at the beginning of the fiscal year, we probably covered that with somebody else, and it's going to be really hard to catch up on that. You know, it's 
sort of, so to speak, at the end of the year. It kind of, it happens when it happens. It, it doesn't, we can't, we can't staff the branches twice as much at the end of the year for right. June because we're trying to spend the money that would be good governance of, of the resource. Whereas spending on the materials, people will use the material in ours. So, um, but that's, that's the shared stuff. Do you have questions about anything in here? It's good. Um, we've got a line for each branch. One more. A line for each branch. The middle section, we um, add the branches together if you're in a locality that has multiples to show what the locality is going to need to cover for us. Salaries pieces off of the payroll spreadsheet, that calculation. So the money that comes from each one of the the um, counties doesn't go to books and materials, right? Am I getting that straight? That, that state aid yeah. covers that completely? No, state aid, it, it, it does not. Um, so here's state aid, and so um, Books and materials is projected so to be a $765,000 expense. Yeah. So, but we got, okay, we got $3 million in state aid. No, no. Three million. The, well, statewide, there was a $3 million increase in increase. state aid. It gets distributed to the various public libraries across the state based upon their portion of calculated state aid. Gotcha. Okay, so three million was the whole pot and it got spread out. That was the increase that's not, in the whole pot. That's not the PRL's in, portion. That was the increase in the whole pot. Yeah. What was the whole pot? Um, it's about $27 million. Okay, so $27 million is divided up. And then, okay, and so our portion of that $27 million goes to state aid. I mean, goes to comes to us. Comes, comes to us as state aid. Comes to us as state aid, and we spend it on books and materials to yes. keep it clean. Okay. We're, we're yes. budgeting six hundred forty-eight thousand twenty-five dollars of state aid for state aid. Right. Toward books and materials. And our books and materials yes. is seven sixty-five one hundred three. Okay. So that so then the locations divvy up the additional yes one hundred some thousand. Got it. Thank you. I didn't hear the last portion of what you said. Oh, the difference. Yeah, the difference is covered by the um, localities. That's yes. Yeah. That's what I was just going to try to say. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Sorry. Mm -hmm. Are there, do you have any questions about any of the branch, branch stuff? No. to come this year. Um, we'll see as the county administrators are doing orientation with their boards, they'll probably be working hard to develop schedules on what, um, what departments they'll want to hear from. Um, if you start to watch this like in the, the little, you know, Gucci Gazette, not the Gucci local, Mechanicsville local, you'll probably see, yes, they're, they're going to hear from 
the sheriff, they're going to hear from the fire chief, they're going to hear from the superintendent of schools. Everybody's making their bids for money. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, schools is generally about half of what people are spending, I believe. Um, generally, a little over that, but yeah. Yeah. Um, so that's a significant portion. Public safety is a significant portion. So, so Tom, of the increases to Goochland, Hanover, and Kingwood. Those are attributable to cost increases and the fact that King and Queen is no longer funding a share of the shared services. Right. Correct. So yep. that's that's what the seven percent, five percent, eight percent increases. Yeah. On the on the shared on your shared panel, um, we went down we went down these, and the ones that we could um, make a cut based on not having something for King and Queen, we did. Um, like salaries and benefits, which is the biggest section here, $1.3 million, there was no cut from that. I don't have I don't have a vacancy that's going to be there five percent of of that. Um, but we could reduce the amount of supplies by five percent because we're not providing paper clips and bathroom cleaning to the branch anymore. So um, so some of that got made up by um, by well, those There was no cut on personnel. There was a cut on the assigned personnel costs to King and Queen went away, but with a 5% personnel increase for salary adjustments, it was still an increase in personnel. Still an increase in personnel. And the decrease in rent, that's Montpelier, isn't it? The 29976 We Yeah, we are anticipating that, that to be a decrease as an expense and not a decrease in revenue from the county. When we moved into the new Atley building, we had leased the former space that was you know, retail commercial space. And um, we retained the you know, funding for the rent to be able to use for more staff that we needed in, in the new branch. That's right. That was, at the time, with different county administrator, different board of supervisors, different staff and finance. <laughs> that that was agreed to, I would say, to, to, you know, to be carried forth with Montpelier. But that's been several years, so we'll see. But that is within what we proposed. We kind of noted that that had been the precedent why we were doing that. Nobody told us you need to redo it. Um, so we'll see. But that is what that is from. Tom, anything else on the budget over here? Yeah. All right, let's move to the reserve fund. screen, um, but I'll, I'll kind of go over this. Um, at, at the end of fiscal year 23, um, we have $2,562,370 for our fund balance. Um, the question is, to where does that come from? That comes from surplus funding that we've gotten over decades. Literally, um, it was about a million dollars when I started, um, and um, I was told that 
that primarily came from um, the Rockville Branch projects. Um, the Rockville Branch was given to Hanover, given to PRL. Um, Jamie Cochran, um, the Cochran family that went to the night trucking. Um, mm -hmm. He grew up in the Rockville area, and he and his wife, they gave an initial donation that built the branch, and there was a second donation that added the meeting room on, which is named for Mr. Howard, I believe, who was Mr. Rockville's very close friend. But I, I was told that that was where the bulk of the, those dollars came from. So, but they they built they built the branch, and then they built an extra room, and there was still an extra million. Uh, there was there was like eight hundred thousand left over. Know, well, in the reserve, and what I was told was that the, the bulk of that came from that. But it also comes from you know any year that there's a dollar left basically out of our operating. We, the library retains that because we're a, a regional government. Just like, I'm going to say, just like your locality retains the funding that they don't spend, they, you know, I pay taxes on my house, my vehicles, you know, just, you know, just like you do. And um, the county will produce a budget, let's say they're going to spend you know, $40 million on the things that they're spending the dollars on. If they spend $39 million of it, they have a million left in reserve. So we, we're in the same boat. Um, we have used that from time to time, and we've been trying to get it spent down to a lower level. And the designation of the reserve will reflect that. We can talk about how, how that works. But um, in the last year, as we mentioned this earlier, um, I can say at least when we approved the budget, um, last year we had a $250,000 request to Ashland. We had about $140,000 in federal funding that we had applied for to provide hotspots um, and, and computers for the public that we expended the money in the previous fiscal year that came to us in um, FY23. So there is a big increase there. Um, I, can, I can tell you there's a quarter of a million dollars more in revenue in this current fiscal year, FY24, that we wouldn't really have been able to anticipate on July 1. Um, the same gentleman that provided us with a very generous bequest towards Atlee, Timberlake family, they, it's in the Rutland subdivision. Rutland is the name of their family home. Um, the, last, the last two Timberlakes, brother and sister, um, the brother included PRL in his will. He died suddenly, so it came to us a little bit sooner than expected. The initial check was $400,000, and we end up putting that, we, the library board, ended up putting that money towards the county's project at the time. Um, mm -hmm. The county had built the building, and it was, there. the estimate um, was 20% under what bids came in, um, so there was a huge gap. Which, which branch was this? The Atlas. The Atlas branch. Yeah. The, Timing is everything with construction, and if you're building and bidding in hot market, you know, sure. you'll pay for it. Yeah. Um, so yesterday, there was a, in the mail an envelope from Edward Jones, and there was a check for $178,000, which is what is left of um, Mr. Timberlake's estate that is coming to us. There, it was. There's no real note on it. The note, the note on the check from Edward Jones was that they had issued it at his sister's request <laughs> to us, and they mailed it to us at our post office box. So that goes right into the reserve fund. No, it does not. 
And I think one of the things to say about the reserve fund, the reserve fund is a um, like a philosophical design. There is no bank account that is the reserve fund. It is what we have in excess at the end of the year measured on June 30th. But so we don't, where is it? I mean, where is $3.1 million? It's where? in our general fund, our general account. And, and that is held by Hanover County. Right. But how, how much do you anticipate from the standpoint of their investment strategy for you to earn on that money to, that goes back into your reserve fund? Um, or does it? So <laughs> it, it, well, it, earnings mm -hmm. um, come back to us, and, and we also pay for losses. Right. Um, the, the way that the county has their um, uh, investments set up, it's, it is possible for there to be losses. There have been years where we have not gotten additional income. Mm -hmm. um, when, when we were not in, uh, invested is not the right word, but when we were not partnering as heavily with Hanover County, the library's reserve was in the LGIP, Local Government Investment Pool. That's a service that the state's treasurer offers to localities, political subdivisions. They invest the money in very, very, very secure investments. Um, very low likelihood of a loss, and um, your earnings are um, match match that risk, if you will. <laughs> so, where where does the hundred and seven the check that you got? Where does it go? So, it gets in. It gets deposited into the Hanover County account. We take it to, it happens to be at Wells Fargo. Ken took it to the bank this morning. Um, and then we watch and make sure that the treasurer's office allocates it to us based on time. And where would, they, where would they allocate it to? <laughs> I think that's it's, what Barbara's asking. It, where do you see it show up on your bottom line here? Well, it it won't show up on our like on our bottom line so much in this until you go to reallocate the investment, but it will show up. It will show up as revenue. Just it'll show up as other revenue. So it'll show up as other revenue. Yeah, okay. on on the uh, monthly board right. report. Right. So this did not come with um, strings attached. That the, the one seventy whatever it was was not. They did not ask it to be committed to any particular fund. branch or use is just going into the general fund? Well, I believe that it would come with the same um, stipulations that the first $400,000 came with. But that was um, with um, the intention that we would have a, a local athlete history collection. And okay. Four hundred thousand dollars or five hundred and seventy-eight thousand dollars only makes the, the, the issue worse. We would never be able to spend the dollars on that, which is why when we had this huge gap in the construction costs that needed to be filled, the library board chose to use it for that. We did talk to um, to, to Ms. Timberlake so that she she knew that and she was okay with it. She she did not want it to just be sitting around you know, and not being used. And the conference room upstairs is, recognizes her family. And we have some historical things related to their family there. But there really isn't an athlete history, so to speak, to, to really provide information about. Atley history is going to be included in county history, which is included in state history. and. There's no real need for us to duplicate that. We already have the Virginiana collection at the, at the Hanover branch of the courthouse, library of Virginia is downtown. So, so kind of without strengths, but I would suggest to the library board that you would allocate it to go back to Atley, mm -hmm. which was part of their intention. Um,
so you can see we already have $90,000 here in the committed line that should be used for Atlee. That was the money that was donated to us by the Atlee Friends Group. Um, when, when the building was being bid and um, the, uh, the contract was being awarded, one of the big things that they had to do was call it value engineering. And you take as much out that you can to cover what you don't have money to pay for at the time. So the building was supposed to have a lot of outdoor features. Um, the north wall was all glass. There was supposed to be more of a, a park and amphitheater out there that was tied into the building and everything. Uh, I don't think that you know three hundred thousand dollars is going to build that either. But I that would be our recommendation. We try to utilize that money in that way to make the building sort of whole like it had been uh, instead of trying to spend it you know, like a hundred dollars at a time on a program. But those are decisions that the library board has to kind of come to a consensus with and then we'll have to work with the county to, you know, to, to make that happen because we don't own the building. But that's um, that's part of the change. Um, there is a $98,000 increase in FY24 funding for state aid, um, which again, we didn't know about when it happened. Um, but it's good news. So state aid will um, it's 662,509 in this column, FY24. How much state aid's gone up? 662,509. This is, this is an older file, because that number wasn't that. And it's, is, it's about a $98,000. And is that because there was an extra $3 million allotted? That's our little portion of that? That is that is um, coming from follow-up when the, um, the budget went from thin to thick. Yeah. Okay. And so we will need to amend the budget. Um, we, I will say staff, it's our preference to not do that sort of change by change, month by month much easier to sort of do that maybe one time yeah. instead of twice or monthly because it will really be confusing if you, if you do it a lot. But we will kind of amend and get closer to where we're expecting things to fall um, sometime in the spring. But again, that's in the, this year it's $250,000 in revenue. We've like we've ever had a year where we had two hundred fifty thousand dollars in unanticipated expenses. So at the end of the year, any given year, this number fluctuates based on what we've allocated to be spent out of it in that fiscal year. Yep. Or what we actually spend. What we actually spend. And what other either unanticipated revenue surpluses there were, or over expenditures there were would reduce it. Yep. So that becomes the audited number at the end. That's what we have. Right. So it's just a there's no account. It's just a like a spreadsheet. Right. It's calculation. The money is in our in our bank account. And this is at the end of the year, this is what the auditors come up with and say, there's your there's your June thirtieth balance. What's in the account? Yeah, I, I mean, we're... And then we say, these are the things we hope to spend it on in the future. Correct. And do we get quarterly reports or something about the... Um, I think that the, the county does quarterly allocations on the, on the investment return. Is that yes. what you're asking about? Yes. I mean, like so unrealized gains and losses, more. just kind of where it's at. Yeah. The... Ken, Ken does some reconciliation on that. Um, the, 
Hanover County, I'm not saying it's right, wrong, or indifferent, um, they don't like to show any kind of bank fees or investment fees. So they net those fees against the return, and that's what shows up in, like, in their reporting. But we, we have enough access that we can see how they're doing that with the journal entries to have, have an idea of what their, what their expenses are on things. Okay. So. And sort of related from budget to reserve, for the sake of argument, let's say the budget is just $6 million even. Um, we're not going to spend $6 million on the notes, right? It's kind of like when you, you go out with your spouse, you, like, we're, we're going to buy a new sofa, and we think we could have got $1,000 for it. Well, it's going to be 989 or 1200 it's not going to be an even thousand dollars, and we're we're really the same way. And we try not to overspend unless we've already let you know that that's what we're doing because we're trying to spend more out of the reserve. Um, and generally, within about two percent, about a hundred thousand dollars is where it gets really uncomfortable for us to try to bring it in closer for June thirty. Mm -hmm. So I say that because. Um, I guess, I mean, you could have a different opinion and tell us to try to do differently if you so choose. But that's what, the way that we've been operating for the past several years, trying to get close, but not, not over. Traditionally, has the library board used their reserve fund for sort of one-time expenditures? I know that's how we use our, our fund balance in the town. We're trying not to use ongoing operating expenses funded with fund balance because one of these days you're going to run out. Or one time expenses. That that has been what we have tried to do, kind of what I learned from working with various auditors over the years um, is, you know, is, is, is to use it for something that you don't have funds otherwise, mm -hmm. but don't be paying salaries out of it because of that. Um, in, I think it was in fiscal year 21, we used money from the reserve to, to cover everyone's increases because at the time you were doing the, um, the budget request, the, like the federal government had not come out with all of the ARPA, all of these COVID you know, related recovery programs. And so we said, we, you know, we've got the money, we're gonna use our own money still funding raises and covering like health insurance increases um, but not asking the localities for the funding we, like and we clearly communicated that and did it and because the problem for that is the next year now if you need five percent now you're going to need ten percent i mean the you know the, the costs have gone up mm -hmm. even though you funded it for for the year of course, they all like it the year that they didn't have to pay for it, and they don't like it the year that they do. <laughs> it, it is a problem that way. And one of the things that we've done, it is, I, I would consider it in the category of the one-time expense, but this admin center, what are, what's going to happen with that? We don't have space for everyone, didn't have space for everyone. And so, you know, we lease the offices over here in Clock Tower. The rent does average hundred thousand a year um, and that's what we told the localities we said this we're, we're using this money we're covering it now we're not expecting to ask you for it but this is what we're doing with it and we're expecting to spend down in the, you know at the end of the lease a lot of the reserve so that we have a permanent home you know we we purchase real estate or have something built so that we don't have this as an ongoing expense. Where, where was that decided? Where, because I couldn't find it in the minutes. I found in July of 2020, Hanover was not in favor of a new building. And then I, I've been looking and trying to figure out 
where that was decided, there was a, um, let's see, in July of 21, it said that there would be a finalized information about reserve fund use in the September 2021 minutes. But when I click on the September 21 minutes on the website, it pulls up the April 22 minutes. And so I, I couldn't I look at I don't know about the, I don't know about the website, but the library board has a consensus for to do that. I just need to see where that is. Yeah, I need to see to back. I, you know, where where the library board decided to to, to build a building or buy land or something. I, I yeah, I just need to see where that happened. I, I don't I don't think that they had I mean nobody decided to buy land or build a building. They decided to use Percentage use this side. money to pay the rent for the lease for yeah. the five year period and this money to do something with so that at the end of the lease period right. we have a space to move to. No I mean nobody has decided what that's going to be. Okay. So it's never been decided that there's going to be land or a purchase of a building or anything like that. That's not literally been decided. It's just been assumed. Is that am I right well, about that? It's it's been assumed, I guess, or approved that we're going to use what is the bulk of the reserve to address this need for the office space. But that would be I mean ultimately to spend that money, that would be board decision. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. So that's just right now it's just it's set a, aside for that purpose. It's set aside for that purpose, but it's not been approved. In other words, it's a, it's an uh, assumption. Well it's, it's been approved, approved but it's not aside. specifically designated for a certain action, Barbara looks like. I mean he's he's this is going to help him decide how he's going to manage a location for his office. Right. Right, right. I understand. I'm just trying to, to get like where where this was voted on that we were going to have a new building because um, I can't find it. And so, 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 so now I'm, I'm just trying to understand. To be honest, I mean, I think it's within the, when, when the board designated the reserve fund initially to pay admin rent and to have a future admin capital project, that's their approval. And I, we well, had, we I had a similar see, discussion. Yeah, I don't yeah, remember I don't the exact meeting, way. but I do remember since I've been on the board in June of 22, we've acted to adopt this plan. But is it's not adopted until it's a board vote. Is that adopted? The board voted on it. But it... A brick and mortar building? I don't know. To adopt this oh. plan for allocation of the reserve fund. That's all that's happened at this point. That's right. Oh, I, okay. I see that's what you're all saying. that's happened. Yeah. Nobody has said we're going to buy that piece of land over there, or we're going to buy that building over so there. This, so this. So right is, now, this the spreadsheet basically has been approved as future admin capital project, yes. future branch capital. Okay. Yes. So that I understand. That I understand. So to go to the next level is another whole discussion. Where the board would approve appropriating the money. I'm, gotcha. you know, okay. I'm making it up. We're going to spend four hundred thousand dollars on this four-acre lot. I understand. You know, okay. that's, Somewhere. That's what I needed to understand. Is that <laughs> this is approved and just laying out the spreadsheet and kind right. of assuming yeah. or yes. thinking the money's going to go to a future admin project, but nothing has been. So and, and in each year when we decided. approve a budget, well, the board I assume approved the lease for the space. And then each year we approve a budget that has a rent payment in it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. But at some point, hopefully, we're going to be in a position to approve. We're going to buy that building and move our admin staff in it, or we're going to buy that piece of land and build them a building to be yeah. so we don't keep paying rent. I think that's the thought. Right. It might be the board says we're going to keep spending rent. Okay. Sort of. Similarly, because like you're kind of very literal here, in, from what I'm hearing. Mm -hmm. So you, you as a board this year, you can't approve this expenditure in, for three years down the road. The board three years down the road will have to do that. Why is that? Um, because that's when the that's when appropriation the would, would take place. Oh, because you that's when the, that's when the lease runs out. Well, I mean, you can't obligate. The board in three years to spend that money. Correct. But why, what's the three? I'm sorry. What is the three? Each year, year you adopt the budget and appropriate the funds for that year. 
Correct. We haven't adopted a budget or appropriated a funds for FY 26 or 27. So 26 or whatever is the that's going to be. <laughs> 26 is the next one we. Right. So, gotcha. Yeah. So this so is the next year that would. This is a plan, a map, you know, to, to get that. I mean, you know, you have. There are. There are 34 months left on the lease. How many? 34. 34. Um, just you know, double checking with the staff and everything before this meeting. Mm -hmm. So at the end of that time frame, we're going to have to do something. And, and of course, if you're building, you're going to have to do that two years before that. You're going to have to start. Right. What is the land that we're buying? Right. What are we designing? What are we building? Where are we going? So it's the the clock is ticking on that pretty quickly. You right. cannot wait the 34 months and say, "Oh, it's going to happen." Um, so you have to make that decision soon. Yeah, and I, I mean, I guess it's, it's possible that you all decide that you want to continue leasing, but I suspect that your lease payments, your rent payments, are probably going to double. Um, just based on all the other inflationary costs that we have. It's five years later in a real estate market that still is moving. Uh, the building is, when we moved in, the building was probably 50% occupied, and it is nearly full. Um, I, you know, but, but there will be a need. <laughs> to do something. Yeah, so to do something. You're out in, um Let's see, 34 months. So you signed the lease in September? We, we signed it in the fall. There were renovations that took place, and um, we ended up occupying it. Most of us moved in, in January of 21. So, but the lease runs through what of 2026? I, I, can't, I can't do the math in what is 34 months from now. I mean, it's, it's 23, so it's going to be... So it's like the end of September 20, of 26. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, so approximately the end of September yeah. 2026. Okay. Um, at, at the time that we went into this, we, I also was talking to Hanover County to make sure that they knew that we were making these plans, and um, Mr. Podesky was here at that time, and he, one of the things that he said was, well, we, we might be able to fit you in a backup of the county complex. Mm -hmm. the Hanover County, as far as I know, still has plans to build space for their registrar. The registrar, besides office space, they have to have a place where they store their voting machines that is secure and appropriate and all of that. So, you know, that I'm gonna say that might still be an option to you know put our pool our money in with them. They're seventy percent of the operation anyway. Mm -hmm. That would be a good location. Prior library boards have wanted the library office to stay on the campus for Hanover and be a part of that environment. Not be out of sight, out of mind, but I haven't heard anything more about that as a project. That they would build, not not you would you wouldn't um, go into space that they already have. They're they're they adding. They not on. have that space. Gotcha. They would have okay. to build it. And at the time, I believe that the thought was they were going to be building that at the courthouse. That's interesting. I didn't know that. People and plans change. But there was a lot of discussion about all of this. Um, yeah. The, and actually, the board did not actually um, approve the lease. I mean, I, I negotiated and signed um, for the lease. That is part of the policies say, that the director has that authority to do that. But there was plenty of communication along the lines because it, kind of, it really took forever. We're still working that out, et cetera, um, trying to get still, us fit in. Still working out your space? When, 
at the time, it took it took multiple months to come to an agreement to lease that space. <laughs> oh, okay. How that like how that transaction was structured. So I was letting the board know every month what was going on. With it. Gotcha. Okay, thank you. So, and you know, at the end of all of that, and these years that are in the gray, um, might as well be written in pencil right. <laughs> for what it's worth. You know, but that's the plan. It's a plan. To spend down, use the money for library needs. You're not burdening the county with needing to come up with funding for either a building or ongoing for lease, rent, however you want to phrase it. Um, okay. Thank you, Tom. About a brief update on where we are with the audits? Um, 22 has still not been issued. Um, we last heard from Cherry. We've returned um, their questionnaire related to their findings. Um, Mike Reinhardt emailed on November 15th and you know, said they would try to issue within the week. Um, had not heard from them. Uh, I, con I sent him an email and asked him for a status update and I've gotten no response to that yet either. Um, that is kind of holding up what work we can do on the 23 audit. Um, what, one of the things that I have done is um, contacted the accountant um, that the Hanover Finance had suggested might be able to help us. Her name is Ann Schauber. Um, we had a couple of phone calls. I have a proposal from her. She's, she charges about $185 an hour. Um, she, she lives in Roanoke, so she would be working remotely, generally. Um, she's willing to be on site if need be, and pay for her travel, mileage, hotel, per diem, um, which is all laid out there. How, how did you find her? Um, she was recommended by the head of Hanover's finance department. And Ms. Schauber has, I'd say, about 30 years of experience in local government finance. As a CPA. But there's nobody local that we could use? Uh, I, I mean, I checked with the one that they gave me as a, as a referral. Um, she happens to do the town of Ashland's audit for them. So I mean, she, she, she does do work. You know, kind of all across the state. Um, it seems pretty reasonable um, from, from what I know um, and what Cherry was quoting us to do a similar service. And this is to help with the financial statements, right? Right. Yeah. And this is your you, it's pay as you go. If you, know, right. if you need her help, you're paying, unlike Cherry's, which was a flat fee. Um, how much was she? 100. She quoted 185. Her contract says that she reviews it. She, she's self-employed. She reviews it like July one every year. Yeah, seems reasonable. Um, it's, it's pay as you go. I, I felt in we we spoke for probably 45 minutes the first time that we talked. Um, and, <laughs> kind of have got a good feeling from having spoken with her. She has worked with the um, folks at Mayors that are doing our 23 audits, so she has past experience with them, a working relationship, which would be it's helpful. a good thing to have yeah. going into yeah. this. I mean, does she really need to, do you, do you anticipate she need to come on site very often? Or is this something that you would be comfortable um, remote? I would, I would, I guess I would probably suggest that perhaps she comes when the audit is issued. Is at the board meeting when they, when they, uh, um, when Mayors is here to present it. Mm -hmm. um, 
but in terms of working with us, I mean, I, I think we can, you know, we can phone and Zoom and collaborate with documents. I don't think that's that big of a deal. Um, but, but yeah, um, not, not particularly needed to have on so. so, so with regard to the 22 audit, all right, what is the sticking point? <laughs> Is it still the Cherry capital, has capitalization to, issue? What's Cherry has to issue the documents. Right. I but can't really say what they're, I'm sure they're going to say they're working on other um, projects. But they've got enough information to issue that document. Correct. And, and, and you've answered no, their questions back, or the responses to their draft findings. There's, right. so there's no legal recourse. Books. There's no legal recourse we have with regard to that auditor. No. That's strange. So the, the ball is in their court. In other words, they have everything they need, and they just have to issue the, the they audit. They are not waiting on us. Okay. We frequently find ourselves in that issue with our cattle monitors. It's their timeline. And give them a target. And last year I was March getting on it. Was that, what was that woman's name again? Ruth? What was her name? Ann Schauber. The, okay, that's not even close. That, that is who you're asking about, Ruth. Right? Yeah, Ann <laughs> Sorry. Ruth? I don't know where that came from. I, I have no idea. Okay, I just. Okay, thank you. Um, I, I think, it, I mean, at this point in time, I would say that I'm planning to pick her. I don't see anything difficult in her proposal. Mm -hmm. We're not obligated to spend any more or spending anything with her, although I think it would be helpful. I'll, I'll, we'll take that through procurement to get that approved. I will sign it and send it back so that we have some additional help with the 23 audit to try to get that taken care of mm -hmm. ASAP, which I believe is everyone's interest, including staff. Um, and and, and we'll, we'll work to move forward. Now, we do not have her cost in the budget, though, do we? We do not. So, how will we pay for that? Um, I mean, again, the budget's a plan. And we know that there are parts of the plan that are already, you know, off in terms of spending. We have money to do that, including for, I mean, if you had to, but you don't, the quarter of a million dollars. And I just talked about, you know, it's being increase in revenue for this fiscal year. Okay. But but there there is enough surplus money in our personnel line to move, you know, five grand into contractual to pay those. Okay. And I say five grand because I think that's I think that's what it calculates out approximately for forty hours, which is probably more time than we would anticipate needing. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Tom. Committee meeting schedule. Obviously, during times where we're working to build the budget, perhaps we may need to meet more frequently. But um, what type of a schedule would you all be comfortable with? Would you like to look at every other month, monthly? Hmm. I, don't I don't know that we need to meet every month. Probably every other month. Does that sound reasonable? And if we feel like we need to meet more often, we can certainly do that. Yeah, right. I think that sounds good. Well, what do we want to talk about for our next meeting? I would suggest certainly well clear of the first of the year at this point. Day of the week that is better for everybody? What 
was today. Well, today it varies by the week for me. Yeah. It all depends what time during the day. If it's in the afternoon, I can probably do it any time. Is, is afternoon better or morning? Or? If, if I might ask, I mean, sort of like working with this consulting accounts in person, would, would you like to schedule a meeting based on having something to meet and discuss and perhaps do this with sort of on a reporting basis to the committee? Because, I mean, the things that I have, and I may not have all of them, um, like a, a sort of flesh out a calendar for you on the budget process, you want to see like a schedule of deposits and vendor list. That would work. Which, I mean, I, yeah. do you need to come back together for that? Or yeah. could we just send, send those to you? Yeah. We could send them and then we could discuss it yeah. if we could. I feel think like starting with you and trying to do that would be best. So, are we, so are we saying not schedule a meeting? Do you want to have a tentative meeting schedule just so we have something that we can, like in January, wait, what? November, December. So today is the 28th. Is yeah. so the end of January? I was, late January. I was going to say early February. Early February? Okay. And that way we probably will know what the budget hearing process will be in the localities. And some of your planning can be based on that. Okay, so that you would suggest beginning of February? Are you talking? So if we're looking first week in February. The week of the fifth. What? Week of the right? fifth? Okay. Um, I could do Monday. Pretty much any time of the day. I guess later in the day on a Monday is usually better because you never know what's going to happen Monday morning. In the office. Yeah, I, I'm. I'm okay. Uh -huh. Any day but Thursday of that week. And I could do Wednesday afternoon. Seven. Seven. So. Why don't we? Um, you want to try it? You like two o'clock? Two o'clock works for me. That gives us room. I guess it depends on where we're going to do it. Yeah. So it's somewhere centrally, so that I guess you're about an hour. About an hour to hear. For me? To hear? Yeah. Oh no, it's like 35 minutes. It's not okay. too bad. I'm 15 minutes or so. So if we can meet somewhere in this area. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm retired. <laughs> you guys are doing all the work and paying Social Security, which I love. Right? You're welcome. <laughs> I'm doing my best. <laughs> so, <laughs> so let's say Wednesday the 7th at 2. Wednesday the seventh at two, and tell yeah. us where is available. Yeah, to be determined. Now, who, who? We'll try to do that here in a minute or two. Some, we've got somebody looking already. Okay. I, I like you. Yeah, I mean, I, yeah, I don't this, really care. I mean, oh, is Atlee like close or Ashland? Is that good for you too, John? That's fine. What's that? Would you say? Ashland or? Um, I was about to say. Ten district. Yeah. Good. Yeah, I really, I really don't care. Here, there is half, half of the room available um, at two from two to four. Check or Ashland, or I don't know. I don't care. I don't care. Two o'clock. Yeah. Are we thinking about it here, mechanics? Sure, let's do it here. That works. I don't care. That's fine. I think we'll probably be in this half of the room. Maybe. It's guessing that whatever. Is this a half of the room right now? Oh, okay. This is. Yeah, at least it's unavailable. Okay, so this room. The seventh. Over here. On the seventh seven, at two. two yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. That's good. Anybody open for bringing the cookies? <laughs> Yes. <laughs> cookies and coffee. Oh, yeah. We charge cookies. <laughs> right. Actually, be on the other side. Uh, it looks the same. <laughs> it's, a, it's a projector instead of a monitor. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. Sounds good. All right.
right, anything else we need to discuss? Nope. Well, if not, I suggest we adjourn. All right.